Firstly, I would like to thank Professor Kim and Professor Ko for inviting me to give this presentation. I've been to Korea many times. I love this place. I have a lot of PhD students with me. And Professor Kim is here. Um, he was um, one of my PhD students, worked with Professor Kim for six years. It was wonderful. So I love this place. The title of my presentation is Managing Carbon Storage to Enhance Resilience in Soil Health and Agriculture Productivity. My previous speaker, Professor Yang Wan Zhou, has touched upon carbon. So I will talk about how you can use carbon capture to achieve this. Um, carbon provides the skeleton and energy for microbial function. And microbial function is so critical, as just explained by Professor Zhou, thereby influencing soil biological health. When we talk about soil, biological health is very critical. Of course, phosphorus is very critical for as a nutrient, but biological health is equally important. So carbon value from waste, we produce a lot of waste. You can see this is the global production of biosolid. Huge volume of biosolid is produced. Again, Yang Wanzo just explained about that. Large volume of biological waste, including biosolid, manure, compost, and green compost are produced. These can be used as a carbon source to improve soil health and agricultural productivity, thereby achieving food security. So this is the background about my presentation. But this is the outline of my presentation. I will, I will briefly introduce greenhouse gas emission. Then I will talk about carbon sequestration potential. Then I will talk about organic cycling in relation to carbon storage and soil health and productivity. Some conclusion. These are our cats. They are smarter than me. OK? And greenhouse gas emission. <coughs> this is in New Zealand. I lived in New Zealand for 22 years. And New Zealand is similar to Ireland. Ireland, sorry. Our professor come from Ireland. He knows about this. Now, this is the New Zealand greenhouse gas emission and global greenhouse gas emission. You can see in, green, in New Zealand, the majority of the greenhouse gas come from agriculture, what we call non-carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide. Globally, it is mainly carbon dioxide. If it's globally around 64%, in Australia it is 74%. Probably in Korea it's more than 80% because majority of the greenhouse gas is carbon dioxide from industries, transport. So these are some of the greenhouse gases you can see all the way from carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide. And it also gives the greenhouse effect, the percentage. You can see carbon dioxide is the highest 50%. But methane and nitrous oxide are more potential. The carbon dioxide is having greater effect simply because the volume of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is less global warming potential compared to nitrous oxide and methane. But the volume is so much, carbon dioxide dominate. And this gives the carbon dioxide emission. You can see in Australia, coal-fired power station. And we send a lot of coal to Korea, OK? If you have any problem, blame us. So this is the total emission. You can see this gives the total emission. Australia is there. South Korea also is there. And that's the per capita emission. So the message is Australia and Korea are the top 20 in total carbon dioxide emission. China, of course. India, they are the number one and two. But Australia is top 10 in per capita emission. So that's the debate. You go to China or India, they said, why should we worry about total emission? Let us calculate per capita. You come to Australia, they say, it is the total emission. So you are the culprit. So it's a debate, depends upon where you go. 
So we identified carbon dioxide is the major greenhouse gas emission. So what can we do about that? That's what carbon sequestration potential. Now IPCC, Inter Panel on Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change, believes soil carbon sequestration is one of the measures to mitigate greenhouse gas emission. Some of the strategies include conservation tillage, soil amendments like compost, biochar, manure, you add them, and crop rotation. However, some of the intensive farming techniques can lead to carbon depletion in soil, thus reducing its capacity to act as a sink. We are trying to use carbon to store the, we are trying to use soil to store the carbon, but intensive agriculture can deplete carbon. So that's why organic recycling through soil application can help to increase the carbon storage thereby mitigating greenhouse gas emission. So put, the, put back the carbon back into the soil. That's what carbon storage is about. Australia approaches two-way greenhouse gas. One is carbon tax. The so industry polluting carbon, they are taxed, coal-fired power station. The other approach we call direct action. So soil provides a significant reservoir of carbon, so therefore, the government provides incentives to the farming community to improve the carbon storage. So the carbon tax was the labor government. They lost the government because people didn't like carbon tax. So the current government promotes carbon storage in the soil. Now that's what our topic is, how you can storage carbon. We talked about greenhouse gas. Carbon dioxide is the maximum, highest volume. How you can overcome? Store more carbon. That's where carbon storage comes. Now this is Australia. You see, the carbon in Australia is very low, less than 2%. Very, very low carbon. Whereas you go to New Zealand, the carbon can go up to 15%. You go to Ireland, probably can go 20%. There's a good amount of carbon, but Australia, very, very low carbon. That means there is a potential to increase the soil carbon content because we have a very low carbon. That's the challenge. Now we did a kind of modeling exercise. So this is the net emission of carbon dioxide, around 500 million tons per annum. So if we use all the agricultural land in Australia, all you have to do is increase the carbon by 0.4% carbon, you can completely offset. But it is very impossible to cover all agricultural land. So therefore, we go for managed land. Because agricultural land also include range land. Range land means just leave the cattle there, forget about this. So that's why managed land. In managed land, you have to increase by 0.39% to offset. It is possible. But let us go to irrigator land. Irrigator land is the most intensive cultivation. There you have to increase by 9%, which is impossible. So what I'm trying to say is carbon capture is likely to offset a significant proportion of carbon emission, but not all. So you can use soil to store the carbon and offset some of the greenhouse gas emission, but not all of them. So soil has the potential. Now compost versus biochar. We talked a lot about biochar. Professor Oak is one of the international authority on biochar. So we call him the Pope of biochar, the <laughs> God of biochar, or you can say the Prince of biochar. He looks like a prince too. So applying organic waste could increase carbon storage in soil, thereby contributing to greenhouse gas emission. However, these organic man waste can break down very fast. So they can release carbon instead of storing carbon. So that's why we want to convert that into biochar. So when you convert it into biochar and put it into the soil, 
the carbon will remain for a long time. That's the objective of making manure into compost. So this is a typical uh, carbon cycle, and that's the biochar cycle. You can see in the typical carbon cycle, all carbon will go back, so net. Whereas in a biochar, you can capture a significant amount of carbon. So biochar provides permanent carbon sequestration if it returns back to the soil. So it is possible to use biochar to store carbon. However, there is a problem. Biochar production from compost can compromise the fertilizer value. When you add compost to soil, the aim is to increase the soil fertility. The microorganism can capture the carbon, you have a soil, better soil fertility. Whereas biochar doesn't release carbon, so you're compromising the fertilizer value of the compost. So therefore, also biochar production also an energy consuming process, and it can also lead to release some greenhouse gas when you produce biochar. So there is an issue. So therefore, we thought, is there any alternative way? You store the carbon, at the same time, you make it as a fertilizer. To stabilize the carbon without impacting the quality, fertilizer quality. Natural clay materials are very effective in stabilizing organic matter in the soil. So if you go to New Zealand, the soil in New Zealand contains a clay called volcanic ash cave. It's called allophanic clay. So they can capture the carbon and store the carbon. That is why New Zealand soil has a lot of carbon, whereas New Zealand Australian soil doesn't have much carbon. So we thought we can use the same approach. So we undertook some study. So the objective is to examine the value of nano clay material, iron and aluminum oxide, and one clay called allophanic clay in the stabilization of carbon in organic amendments. And then we took that co-compost, that is the organic amendment, with the clay material to look at the value as a soil fertility. I just provide some results, not in detail. So this gives, we use menu, that's the control menu with clay, iron oxide, aluminum oxide, and allophanic clay. This is biochar, controlled biochar, and with clays. So you can see, this is the release of carbon. In the biochar, there's not much release of carbon. We expected that. But the real message is, by adding clay, you can reduce the release of carbon from compost. So that's the objective. So you reduce the release of carbon without compromising the fertility value. So the addition of iron and aluminum oxide and allophanic clay decrease the rate of decomposition of compost. The decrease in decomposition may be attributed to the difference in the redistribution of carbon. When you add the clay material, the carbon redistribute. So we thought we would do some simple chemical extraction to look at the various fractions of this carbon by adding the clay material. So you can see this is the control, and this is with the three clays, and this, this is the compost, and this is biochar. The first one is clay, and then you have the clay material. So you can see there was an increase in non labile or what we call residual fractions of carbon when you add clay material. So manure alone has a lot of labile carbon. So therefore, you release a lot of carbon. By adding clay material, you make it non labile so less bioavailable. So that means you can store for longer. Now, this is what, this is how the clay is, the carbon is retained by the clay material. So that's iron oxide, the organic matter, so it binds with the iron organ. So iron and aluminum oxide immobilizes the 
carbon, thereby preventing it from microbial decomposition. So therefore, clay materials can be used to retain carbon. Then we thought, can we use this biosolid directly to the soil and see whether we can store some carbon? This is one of the biosolid for carbon storage experiment. It was a landfill site. Professor Yang Wan Zhou talked about peri-urban region. In peri-urban region, a lot of landfill site. So we want to make use of the biosolid to phytocapping the landfill site. So this is a phytocapping experiment. This is a landfill site in which we are using, this is sunflower, this is mustard, so this is a landfill site. We undertook a phytocapping experiment. So you cover the soil with plant. It's called phytocapping. Just like you have a cap on top of your head, I can't have it. So that's what phytocapping means. So the primary objective of this field experiment was to examine the value of the biosolid in phytocapping landfill site. <coughs> The city council gave us that landfill site. The landfill site has been closed, but they wanted that to be converted into a biopark. So they gave that to the university. So we were trying to look at a biopark. We also monitored the carbon storage in the soil. We used two plant species, mustard and sunflower, three rates of biosolid application, 0, 25, and 50 tons per hectare. We monitored for three years. I just briefly give you the data. Firstly, we look at a number of biosolid and look at the decomposition, release of carbon. So this gives the relationship between iron and aluminum in the biosolid and the rate of decomposition. The biosolid contains a lot of iron and aluminum oxide, the decomposition decreases. And when you treat wastewater, <coughs> you add iron flocculant, aluminum flocculant, so they can hold on to the carbon. So there is a relationship. So that is one of the SEM picture. The biochar contains some iron which can retain the carbon. So we did some synchrotron studies, which I will show you later, how iron can retain the carbon. So the rate of decomposition biosol depends on the iron and aluminum oxide. So then we look at the carbon storage. This gives the carbon storage in the soil. We covered for three years. This is the carbon sequestration, 50 tons, 25 tons, and no biochar. So we look at one is mustard, another is sunflower. So we look at both mustard and sunflower. And that's the rate of carbon accumulation. I'm not going through the number there. The message is the net rate of decomposition, carbon storage from biosolid application was higher for mustard than for sunflower. That's because mustard produced a lot of root biomass because most of the carbon is sitting in the root. So when you have a huge biomass, you store more carbon. So by applying biosolid, as Professor Yang Wan Zhou just explained, you provide the nutrients, you improve the soil health, also you provide the carbon. On top of that, when you improve the soil fertility, you produce more biomass. By producing more biomass, you capture the carbon, CO2, you know, photosynthesis. So biosolid application improve carbon storage directly by supplying carbon, indirectly by improving soil health. So finally, how this carbon storage can improve soil health and productivity? What we did is we took the compost, we added clay material, and we found the clay material can store more carbon. Now we want to know whether by adding the clay material, whether you are compromising other fertility value. So therefore, we look at two aspects. One is, we look at when you add this co-compost to soil, 
what happened to soil physical fertility. That's called water-stable aggregates. When you produce more aggregates, that means better. So you can see that is soil alone, that is the compost poultry manure without any clay and poultry manure with clay. By adding co-compost, you are increasing the aggregation. But the important message is there is no negative effect of adding clay to poultry manure and improving physical fertility. Then we look at mineralizable nitrogen. What happened to the nitrogen in the soil when you add compost? So you can see that again, that is soil by itself, and then these are the compost. That's the poultry manure alone, and poultry manure with clay material. So there was an increase in mineralizable nitrogen by adding compost, because you are adding a lot of nitrogen, which is not great. But the important message is, there was a slight decrease in mineralizable nitrogen in soil treated with a compost in the presence of aluminum oxide. Because we all know that aluminum is toxic to microorganisms, where iron is not. So that's why when you add aluminum flocculation, aluminum alum, the, the biosolid may not be good for soil. So therefore, they are trying different flocculating agents. Co-composted products improve both the physical, which is soil structure, and chemical, which is nitrogen mineralization, fertility of the soil. One of the things we didn't look into is what happens to phosphorus. Those so young ones know very well, by adding some of this iron and aluminum oxide, you can bind the phosphorus. So there can be some decrease in phosphorus availability. But we are not losing the phosphorus. Phosphorus will still sit in the soil. So by adding this compost, you are not compromising the fertility, but you can improve the carbon. So we also look at some of the other fertility aspect from the literature. So this gives the relationship between organic matter, which is carbon, aggregate stability, improve the physical fertility. This is cationic chain capacity, which is one of the chemical fertility, again, there is an increase. Carbon is very important. That is what we call microbial biomass carbon, a biological fertility. So what I'm trying to say is that organic matter, that is the carbon addition, enhances the physical, chemical, and biological fertility. So carbon is very important. Ultimately, for the farmer, it is how much you produce. Okay, you can improve the soil fertility. So you can see that by adding more carbon, you increase more maize, more wheat yield. Because at the end of the day, farmer is looking for improving productivity. So organic matter enhances soil health, thereby improving agricultural production. So what are the conclusions? All the way from greenhouse gas, carbon storage, carbon health. Number one, carbon sequestration in soil is an important strategy to manage climate change resulting from greenhouse gas emission. Co-composting or bio-waste. Co-composting means composting manure with clay material. With clay material is effective in the stabilization of carbon. Applying organic amendments including biosolid and compost to agricultural land increases carbon storage in soil. Carbon enhances the physical, chemical, and biological fertility of soil, thereby increasing agricultural production. I don't know how many people have been watching this program. Cosmos, just beautiful. If you haven't watched it, just go and watch it. It's a beautiful presentation. What is the take home message? There are two take home messages here. One is soil amendments enhances compost stabilization. If you add compost directly to the soil, you can release carbon dioxide. But if you add some clay material, you can reduce. Alternatively, you can convert into biochar and add. But adding, making into biochar, 
you can compromise some soil fertility value. The second message is biosolid increases carbon sequestration through directly supplying organic carbon to soil and indirectly enhancing plant biomass. This is one of the work we did with um, uh, Professor um, um, uh, Donald Spark is an international expert in synchrotron work. So this is a we um, the work was done to examine the value of iron in the soil in stabilizing carbon synchrotron work. So this is everyone knows. This is Ron, Donald Rumsfeld. He says there are no knowns. Known unknowns, unknown unknowns. I can't understand what he says. Okay? <laughs> Whether it is Donald Rumsfeld or Donald Trump, we can't understand what they are saying. Okay? But I'm sure Koreans were enjoying Donald Trump, it looks like. And Chinese are more enjoying now. <laughs> okay. Perhaps there are more unknown unknowns in carbon storage to enhance resilience and soil health and agriculture productivity. Perhaps we should be doing more collaborative work. Thank you.